Hi everyone. In this video, I want to talk about the ring size guides that come with the Jewelry CAD library for Rhino that I've recently released. Now this library comes in both a free version and a paid version. And so the main difference between the two is the number of gym models and the number of materials. And I would rather that you download the free version and make sure that it works on your computer. Make sure that you're able to use it fine and uh, that's going to be useful for you. And then if you feel like you would like those other materials and those other gym models, go ahead and upgrade to the paid version, which should be very inexpensive. Now, back when I used to work in the industry, I didn't actually use plain Rhino. I used a modified version of Rhino called Matrix. And uh, Matrix had a drop-down menu that you could select your desired ring size from. You could choose the sizing system, like the US system, the UK system, etc. And then you could choose the, uh, the actual ring size from a drop-down menu. And I've tried for the last couple of years to come up with something nice and easy for ring sizes like that in Plain Rhino. Mostly I experimented with grasshopper scripts uh, like the one that you see here. The one that you see here is for the US or North American uh, ring sizing system. But I've never really liked the grasshopper scripts uh, for ring sizes and I don't know why exactly. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that it just seems like an a fairly complicated process just to get a ring sizing circle on there. It's nice because you don't have to go look up the ring sizes, but um, you know you have to bake the circle into the scene and you have to open Grasshopper. So I don't know. I just I never really liked it, and I don't have any idea why I came up with this ring size guide thing, which reminds me an awful lot of the markings on a ring sizing mandrel. At any rate, several months ago, I came up with this idea of these ring size guides, and I just really like the idea. I've been playing around with it ever since, and I've been excited to uh, share this idea with you. Uh, and uh, so I made it part of this library. I hope it's useful, and it's even available as a standalone download from cgtrader.com, and I'll leave a link uh, to that below in the uh, description box as well. So if you don't want the whole rest of the library, but you would like the ring sizes, um, you can get just that for free at cgtrader.com. I've never used this in a production environment, but I think it will be uh, just fine, uh, you know, very convenient to use. The one thing I have to say about using it in a production environment is that I get all of this information off of a Wikipedia article, you know, the ring sizes, and I think there are some errors, at least one, in the uh, UK system. And so there may be errors in the, uh, in the South American Asian system and the Indian system that I'm not aware of. I was able to cross-check the Indian system with uh, Indian uh, jewelry websites, at least one other Indian jewelry website. And uh, they seem to check out and I actually used the sizes from the Indian jewelry website instead of the Wikipedia page which seemed to be exactly the same except the Indian uh, website uh, had them rounded up to the nearest tenth of a millimeter which should be fine so uh, you know I just looked these sizes up and I don't have any way to verify them so if you're going to use these ring size guides in a production setting I just urge you to be careful and double check uh, to make sure that you're actually getting the ring size that you want. There's probably various ways that you could verify that you're getting the correct ring size, but one way is you could go ahead and make your sizing circle and then make a simple band out of it, uh, like the one that you're seeing here. Print that out on a resin printer and then put that band on a ring sizing mandrel to make sure that it is in fact giving you the correct ring size. Now I did from time to time design rings in a software package called Blender and it didn't have any built in ring size tools like Matrix did and so I would use these ring sizes from the Wikipedia page. Actually there is an equation for the US sizes and I used that and I seem to get good results from that. And so uh, this, uh, this um, US ring size uh, guide is actually based on that equation. And there is also an equation for the UK ring sizes and that's what I used for the size guide as well. I think that's going to end up being okay but like I said I, I do have a, a bit of confirmation for the US sizes. I don't have any way to confirm uh, the, the UK sizes because I've never made a ring 
using the UK uh, sizing system. So any feedback that you, uh, any of you may have on these, if you notice an error, if you notice that one of the ring sizes is wrong, or you notice any kind of problem like that, please let me know so I can update these ring size guides or let other people know that you know this particular sizing system seems to have a problem in this area, so watch out for it. And again, just double check yourself uh, if you're using this in a production environment. Okay, so the ring size guides are part of the layer template. You can see down here, uh, the ring size guides are the bottom layers of the layer template. So assuming that you've already set up the template from the library, which is something I went over in the previous video, um, then you'll have these ring size guides down here. Now there's, if you have another template that you like, you don't want to use the template from my library. I'm talking about the layer template here. Uh, there is a way to add the ring size guides to your own template. And I'll show you how to do that a little bit later in the video. But right now I just want to show you how to use these ring size guides. So, uh, whenever you're making a ring in Rhino, you'll start off working in the front viewport to set up your sizing circle. So go ahead and expand out the front viewport. Click on the sizing system that you want. I'm going to click on the US system here. And you'll see here we've got a guide at the top and a guide at the bottom. So the reason for that is um, this will determine where the curve seam is on your sizing circle. So let me just grab a circle uh, tool here and uh, we'll make a circle. So whenever you make a circle, it's going to have a curve seam, and that can be anywhere on the circle. Well, whenever you're making a uh, sizing circle for a ring in Rhino, you want that to either be at the very bottom of the circle, or you want it to be at the very top. And there's reasons why you might choose to have it at the top, and reasons why you might choose to have it at the bottom. I'm not going to go over that in this video, but you just have to, you know, you have to figure out which one you need and then make your circle that way. So if you want your, your curve seam at the top, then you're gonna use the top guide. If you want your curve seam at the bottom, you're gonna use the bottom guide. So uh, after you uh, turn on the sizing guide, uh, figure out whether you want the seam on the top or the bottom. So in this case, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, put it at the bottom. So we're gonna zoom in on this bottom sizing guide here. And we'll say we'll make this a size uh, seven and a half. So I'm gonna zoom in uh, so I can see that size seven and a half mark right here. And we'll grab the circle tool. Uh, we'll put the center of the circle in the center of the world. So all we have to do is type zero and hit enter up in the command line. And then we just snap to uh, that mark, okay? And you wanna snap along the axis, okay? All right, once you do that, you can just turn off the sizing guide. And there you go, there's your uh, size seven. And if we look at the curve seam, you'll see that it's at the bottom. So we'll do the same thing now, but we'll make one using the top guide here. So we'll zoom in on the type, top guide. And let's say this time we want a five and a quarter. So we'll uh, grab the circle tool, put the center of the world, uh, put the center of the circle at the center of the world by typing zero and hitting enter, and we'll snap to um, five and a quarter, okay? And then we can turn off the sizing guide, zoom out, and there our curve seam is at the top. Okay, so that's uh, how you use this. Uh, let's do one though with uh, say the Indian sizing guides. We'll, we'll make our curve seam at the bottom. So we're gonna zoom in here uh, to the bottom, the bottom guide. We'll make this a uh, size 12. So zero, enter, and snap to uh, this right here. Okay, we'll turn off the sizing guide and zoom out. And there you go. Our, side, our curve seam is at the bottom, and this is an Indian size 12, I guess. I don't know anything about their sizing system. but uh, So that's just basically how you use it, all right? So now we'll talk about if you uh, don't want to use this layer template that came with the library, and you have your own template, uh, we'll show you what to do with that. Okay, so if we go over to the library tab and we go to the main library folder, you'll see that there is a ring sizes file in there. Okay, uh, so what you do uh, to add that to your current to your template that your your favorite template that you've already set up for jewelry and that you're used to working with, just go to file and new and uh, click on whatever your template is. So I'm going to use the small objects millimeters template, but in your case, you would pick whatever template is you know, the customized template that you've made for creating jewelry. Okay, so you open that template and you'll come here to the layers tab. You'll see 
we don't have any ring size guides. We've got whatever layers came with our template. Then go to the library folder, just drag, drag that ring sizes file over in, into the uh, scene and click on the import file option and click OK. OK, so this is simply added the uh, ring sizes uh, to your current template. And then uh, for some reason, uh, I have saved this library with the US uh, sizes turned on, and that is a mistake on my part. So go ahead and turn that off. Don't do anything else to your scene and just do file, save as template. And you may want to, you know, don't overwrite. Don't, I mean, you can if you want, but you may want to give this template like, you know, jewelry two or something. You give it a slightly different name just to let you know that it's a, a slightly different template from the one that you've been using. So once you've uh, typed in a name, you can hit save, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel. Okay, so that's how, and from then on, when you use that template, you'll have the ring size guides as part of the uh, template. All right, so that is how you would add uh, the ring sizes to, uh, to your own template if that's what you would rather do. By the way, I had mentioned earlier about using Grasshopper. Uh, let me know if any of you are interested in having that, you know, Grasshopper type scripts for ring sizes included in the library. And I'll think about maybe adding that in the future. Okay, so uh, that wraps up this video. And I want to thank all of you for watching and I hope to see all of you in future videos.